So today I'm going to tell you about my homemade brush cutter boat motor. It's uh, built out of a Ryobi 30cc gas brush cutter slash trimmer. There's also 28cc engine models out there as well. It started out as an expandable unit with a removable lower section um, that you could trade out attachments for. As you can see, this is the B30 model. It's a 30cc engine, two stroke, and uh, I've painted it all of drab. I primed it first. You can see some of the white primer, and um, you can see that some of the components, the handle and the choke lever, um, are made of a plastic that doesn't readily accept paint even with primer, so it's worn off. Uses the stock gear head and uh, the shaft adapter that fits perfectly with a Young's prop. It's made by Young's diecast aluminum prop. This is a model T8. It spins clockwise. If you were to build a uh, long tail or a straight shaft version of this motor, you would need to buy the T10 because it's the identical prop from the T8, but it spins counterclockwise. If you were to buy the opposite one uh, and put them on the other motor, you'd, it would go backwards. Another important part is the motor mount. I made mine out of aluminum flat stock bent into a U-shape and uh, it attaches to a clamp that's actually uh, made for circle track race cars, sprint cars, uh, modified class. This is an aluminum um, ballast clamp. So it's a, it's a clamp for one inch tube and the racers use it to attach weight to different parts of their uh, race cars to affect their handling. It works perfectly to clamp securely onto the tube and then it is the pivot point to um, control the depth, the running depth of the motor. Um, the pivot point is um, something I made. It's a bolt that I cut the head off of and then I basically used two jam nuts to uh, grip it onto the uh, yoke, I guess you could say, and then um, this channel material is for a, uh, a depth stop. I uh, put a threaded rod in there with a, a shoe that cradles the um, cradles the uh, tube and uh, control its depth. This brush cutter model comes with a handlebar clamp that works really well for the tiller handle. I built a tiller handle out of uh, EMT, electrical metal uh, conduit. Um, this is a this is just a prototype so I uh, reused a handbrake cable from a uh, bike, a uh, thrown away bike so the cable itself is pretty rusty and it, it uh, works but it's not ideal. I have it spliced together um, with the original throttle cable from the uh, weed whacker and uh, so because it's rusty inside I had to put in an extra return spring um, like I said it works but it's not perfect we also have um, right here is a splice for the kill switch extended the wires to the um, plastic uh, Chinese twist throttle it works but there are better uh, models out there I, I'll go with a metal one next time here's a closer look at the throttle it's a rotary throttle and we have the kill switch here so this is a look at some of the parts that were used or discarded for this build. This is actually the lower half of the expandable unit. This gearhead used to be on this end of the shaft. Um, it has a wound wire shaft, which um, is not very strong. It's flexible, but it's, uh, it's not as strong as the solid steel shaft that the upper section contains. It, the solid steel shaft used to have a female receiver on it that would uh, mate up with this male portion here. Uh, this right here uh, used to be on the upper section. Uh, cut it off. It's a clamp that clamped onto the uh, lower portion. There's a uh, spring-loaded uh, pin on the end down there that fit into this. Um, I also cut this 
off of the upper section so it was a little shorter so that the existing shaft length would fit inside of the gear head. Another important part when uh, building this homemade motor is having the um, string head for this motor. It comes with this um, shaft adapter and the shaft adapter fits perfectly with the Young prop. Um, the Young's prop comes with a little roll pin so you slide the prop on and you drill through and then you insert this pin. Uh, it could be considered a shear pin as well. I'm going to install a bolt on the end so that if I hit something and I shear the pin off the prop will spin but it won't un it won't fall off because the bolt on the end will will capture it. The brush cutter model comes with this foam U-shaped handle. Um, if you buy the string cutter, the string trimmer model, it uh, does not have the uh, handle clamp. And so you'd have to um, use some uh, other method to build your own tiller handle. The brush cutter model also comes with a tri iron blade and this brush cutter guard. This brush cutter guard used to bolt on to the three ears on the um, gear head. And so I will probably put a skeg on this. Um, some sort of wire skag so that uh, it protects the lower blade of the prop as it's going and I'm also considering adding a, a ventilation plate some people call it uh, a cavitation plate but that's actually a misnomer it's a ventilation plate to keep air from swirling in and uh, reducing the drag made one of the other modifications I made was to cut the front part of this handle off this piece used to made up with the uh, front of this and it would uh this is where you'd hold it that square hole up above is where the kill switch was and the uh, hand throttle assembly was inside that hole there i saved um as much of the handle as possible and i added this uh, hose clamp to keep the pieces together this handle section is held onto the motor by four hex head screws they use the t25 hex head driver and so when I unscrew this, you'll see that the uh, clutch bell and the clutch are inside, but I've uh, made some modifications in there. One of the modifications I made was to remove the clutch. You can see that this clutch was overheating. It has a blue tint to it from getting extremely hot. Um, I found that the drag on the clutch was just too much for it to fully engage, and so um, what I did was took some steps that other um, builders have used. They've actually removed the clutch and had uh, a clutch lockout plate made or made it themselves. Uh, it tends to be uh, a round aluminum disc that screws on in place of the clutch and um, has ears on it that uh, engage the modified clutch drum and turn it into a direct drive. Here's the disassembled uh, engine and uh, handle housing. You can see the four Torx bolts and inside here we have a spring and then the male square end shaft that slips into this female square receiver that ties it into the clutch drum. Um, it's kind of hidden but inside here is another T25 torque bit that um, is required to take the clutch drum off. Off to the side you can see one of the two ears that connects the modified clutch drum to the uh, clutch lockout plate. Here's a view of the clutch lockout plate. You can see how the clutch drum was modified. There's a slot cut in each side and it matches up with the ears on the plate. This is a solid aluminum plate that's threaded just as the uh, clutch is. The clutch is a 3 8 by 24 thread um, and so it uh, screws on in place of it. Um, I had a machinist make this, so it cost about an hour and a half worth of his shop time, uh, which in my case was about 90 bucks. So it is a bit of an expensive part. Um, if there was a way to upgrade the clutch, that would be cheaper. So if anyone has any suggestions, uh, let me know. Uh, it's obvious that this little clutch right here is not up to the task of uh, preventing slippage against this uh, clutch drum. Uh, there's also an oil light uh, bushing inside the throat of the clutch drum. Uh, this is a part that requires replacing from time to time because it uh, that's where the clutch slides when it's uh, not locked up against the uh, 
clutch drum. So you can see these marks on the shaft. This is uh, from one of my test runs where I was uh, evaluating the proper running depth. Um, one of the issues, if you're too shallow, the uh, prop starts to ventilate, which it sucks air in kind of like a vortex when you have a, uh, a whirlpool when you let the water out of your tub. Um, and it loses uh, force. It slips in the water and so it kind of surges. So you want to have your prop fully submerged, but you want to be so deep that the uh, extra depth uh, just causes more drag. So what I was doing was uh, changing the depth in one inch increments and uh, running a test to see what my GPS said the increase or decrease in speed was.